the, the stories come and I feel I need to get them down. I've always told stories. Stories are like music, I, I think, in that they're just there in the air, circling around us. You know. In this room, we've got all those television programs, radio programs, telephone conversations. They're, they're all there. All you need is uh, the, um, the, the right receiver. The place I used to do it a lot was the bath. The number of stories and, or story solutions, if you have a point where you're not quite sure where that uh, how that should go. You know, you take a bath and, it, and at the end of the bath you know the story's fine, you know. Well, it's the same, same favourite uh, as it is now. The, those were the, the stories of Winnie the Pooh, the house at uh, Pooh Corner. And the other one was uh, Treasure Island, which I still think is a fantastic story. Perfect. I expected to be a painter, um, so the, all the influences and the influences on the illustrations were not from illustration but from, uh, from painters or from architecture or from uh, um, things like Persian miniatures or, or, or stuff like that. I started drawing uh, the cartoons and then when I was drawing cartoons, I started looking at, at cartoons and certain artists have got a quality which is more than just a funny drawing, you know, it, they've actually got a quality to them. People uh, like Steinberg and André Francois, in particular those two. And then came across a picture book, Crocodile Tears, which I believe is still in print. And the text is in English and in French. And, uh, and I thought, I can do this, you know, I tell stories, I can do this. I came up with the image first. Um, at the time I was drawing quite a lot of elephants and my paintings and, uh, of different kinds were very influenced by Paul Clay. Uh, at that period, and sometimes still now, um, I like his idea of, of drawing, just taking a line for a walk is a, is a wonderful way of thinking of drawing, I think. So I had the paintings and the elephant. One day I had the elephant and I, uh, did the painting on the elephant, and there was Elmer. And it's it, as if he just tells me things that he's been up to, and, and he says, did I ever tell you about the time when I, uh, I said, no, what was that then, Elmer? You know. and, and he tells me, and then at the end, he said, I think you better do a book about that. And not now, Bernard, I've had letters from several children that say, but uh, the monster is Bernard really, isn't he? And they understand that, I, I think, those children, that we have a monster inside us. Now and again, it gets uh, it gets uh, out of control, and it the monster eats us up. We we become the monster. It's not just a pig which is going to be stuck there forever. It's a wonderful freedom. Finally, the by manoeuvring the uh, the piggy bank gets its freedom. It gets the wish, and off it flies. Charlotte, we see from the picture, she's already got everything. If you look at her at the room she lives in, she's got all, all her stuff, her parents are nice to her, they give her kisses and they give her this, that and the other, the neighbours are nice to her, she sings uh, when she's cleaning the car and things like that. Not everything I do is to do with children's books and I work on themes of different uh, subjects well, as well as picture books. Uh, uh, there were there were things for punch. That was that was something I really enjoyed doing the punch covers. This is a series of drawings which uh, actually are about a trail, and it shows how stupid I am really because they, there's quite a lot of work in them, and I enjoy doing them, and I never show them to anybody. Those are my parents in the living room. Uh, it looks as if my father is listening to the radio or reading a paper or something. My mother would be knitting probably. She used to knit a lot. For picture books, there are certain limitations because of the stories. But these, I've also got stories in them, but you have to find them.
quite a strange uh, move into film. The BBC had already used two or three books of mine where they read the story and showed the pictures. And they asked me if I would be interested in doing a Watch Your Mother series. So I'd already published the first Mr. Ben book. I showed them the, the book and, and talked about it. They liked the idea of, of Mr. Ben and asked me to go away and write uh, um, a series, uh, which I did. Lucky in that I didn't know anything about it because uh, that way I just charged on. At the same time as doing the films, I was drawing for advertising, I was drawing for magazines like the Reader's Digest, I was drawing weekly for the Times Educational Supplement, I was doing educational books in my own books. I was probably sleeping four, four hours a night. A picture book is the one book which is shared by adult and and, and child, you know, so you, you've got an adult audience there. I, I, I like putting in things for, for adults, you know, and the, if the children uh, don't understand, they ask a mother, what, what's that? And, and if mother doesn't understand, which is much more often, she or father, they, they ask the child, what's that? And the child always knows uh, in that case. When I was in art college, we actually did measured perspective where you uh, were taught how to do it absolutely correctly but I was much more interested in what I was showing on the page. I just drew the things the way uh, I wanted to draw them, not trying to make them look like a, a smart piece of, uh, of artwork, you know, I had a job to, to do. These are the best ones of course, the blank paper because you know all the fantastic things that can come up and probably won't. Thank you.